Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. And on this video tutorial, we're going to talk about creating risers. Um, I'm going to be using mostly Dollar Tree items, but I did pull out a bunch of other stuff that I will show you just to give you some ideas. A uh, riser can be used for a lot of different things. You could put a candle on it. You could um, set it out when you're entertaining and have some of your dishes elevated. Um, you can put knickknacks on them. There's just a ton of different things that you can do, and you can create them for almost nothing. So, the first idea I'm going to show you is this. These are, um, I have two of them. There are these little boxes, little wood boxes. This one has a scallop um, that I purchased at Dollar Tree, and I painted them with this color paint, which I am loving. It's Waverly Paint from Walmart, and the color is pool. Um, so that's one thing we're going to do, and we're going to be using these Dollar Tree candlestick things. Uh, and then we're going to be creating a riser out of a stack of hardcover books that we are also painting, and it's going to be adorable. I'm super excited. So, as you're hopping on, say hello, and let me know where you're watching from. Feel free to sprinkle all that normal good stuff, and let's hop right in. All right, so before I came live, I painted both of these, front and back, with two coats of pool. I also painted all three of my books, front and back, just in case I want to mix them up or flip them over or something like that. So I painted everything and it's dry. I didn't do anything else to prep, to prep any of my surfaces, but you could certainly use a um, clear mat spray sealer <clears throat> if you wanted to. Um, so I painted everything, and um, we're going to be using these legs for the stack of books. These are just these little wheel thingamabobs that you can pick up at Hobby Lobby. Um, I ended up gluing these together because I wanted it to be a little bit taller, and I started painting these, so I'll show you that in just a second. And we're using this stencil. That is so cute, you guys. Oh my gosh. This is my um, Magnolia Craft Club project for the month of April 2024. And there's a really cute little riser in here, which we'll do tomorrow. But this is the stencil that came with this package. And oh my goodness, it is so adorable. Um, this particular stencil is exclusive. That means the only way you can get it is to be part of Craft Club. So if you haven't joined yet, let me know and I'll give you the information and you can take a peek and see if you would like to do it. Okay, so I'm going to use this for these. And I have one that's already done. Can I show it to you? I think I will. Look how cute that is! Doesn't that look fresh? and springy or summery. I just, oh my gosh, I'm just absolutely loving this color. So, let's see, I do need my towel. We're gonna do the books up next, so hang with me. Um, oh, and then I have a whole bunch of stuff I pulled out here to show you, if I remember. Okay, this is a, a tacky towel. This side is for fuzzing your stencil. This side is for patting them dry, if you want to. And I'm usually feeling like I'm in a little bit of a hurry, and I do frequently use that side. And I'm just going to lay this on top of my, um, the, the, what would be considered the underneath. I'm going to make that be the top. And I'm just looking to see where I am. I'm 
trying to get it as smack dab in the center as I possibly can. the magnolia chalk paste in the brilliant white but you could do this whole idea in any color scheme that appeals to you I'm just doing a light blue and white theme for these projects today I'm just gonna give my chalk paste a quick little stir grab a squeegee put a plop a couple plops on here and then I'm going to push it through the holes on my stencil with my little squeegee and once I get everything covered I will stop because and I know you if you watch this channel ever you're sick of hearing me say it but um, if you keep going you keep pushing more and more chalk paste or whatever your medium is under your stencil then you don't get a very crisp stencil impression. So just get it on, pull off the globs, and then force yourself to stop. All right, so this is what that looks like. You guys, this is so dang cute. These little, um, they're like little wood trays that are square. They came from Dollar Tree. They're with all the wood pieces. Um, you could use absolutely any shape that appeals to you. I just had these in my closet, so that is what I'm using. Let me throw this over here in my little tub of water so it can soak for a few minutes till I get back out to the kitchen. Whoops, I've already gotten some on my finger and on here, but that's okay. It'll come right off. So that is what that looks like. And I have one that is all ready to go. And I will finish that one up uh, after the fact. So here's the one that I did. This one has this adorable little scallop. It kind of reminds me of a mushroom. And so I was thinking after I'd already done this, how cute it would be to have painted it a really happy red and use one of these little white candlesticks as the base and then to do just white polka dots on it would look very um very mushroom ish so i'm going to glue this in the center and i am going to be using a little bit of my sherbonder low temperature hot gluing device and some e6000 I love the pattern on this stencil oh, and we'll do we'll do the actual project uh, tomorrow I just couldn't wait to do this idea oh goodness gracious Let's see if I have some pliers or something that I can use I got this undone earlier I really close to that and Okay, so when I am doing both a hot glue and an E6000, I always apply the E6000 first. It um, doesn't, doesn't get cold and hard, so it has a little more prep time available on it than the hot glue. And so now I'm just going to add a bunch of hot glue here. The hot glue gives you the immediate stick. Okay, and I want to get it as centered and straight as I possibly can. This is gonna be so cute, you guys. And I did wanna mention, 
When I was digging through my closet over here this morning, trying to see what I had that I could make risers out of, I stumbled on this. And this is adhesive cork sheet. And if you were gonna use this on something that you were worried could get scratched, then I would consider getting some of this cork and just cutting it to the size that you need and putting it on the bottom of your little riser. Okay, so I did paint the edges and the inside. And here we go, dun da da Doesn't that look like a little a miniature cake stand or something? You can't see it when it's down there. It is so absolutely adorable. So when this one is dry, I will do the same thing. But first I'll just clean that little smudge of chalk paste off. So that was the first project that I wanted to show you. And the colors here are Pool, um, Waverly Paint from Walmart. It's a great color. And then I used just plain old white chalk paste from MagnoliaDIY.com. Okay, so that was our first project. The second project is going to involve these books. And before I, I did paint them and everything, before I came live, I took a few minutes to measure out where I wanted my legs to be. And also, I told you that I glued this flat spot together with both E6000 and um, my hot glue and I painted them. And I may come back and touch them up a little bit more. But anyways, what I'm going to do right now is glue them to the bottom book. And I'm like, like I did before, I'm using my, I'm using both hot glue and uh, E6000, and I'm laying them down where I marked with a pencil before I came live that I would want them. And I have done books as risers. We'll talk when I'm finished here about feet. But this is a book, probably from Dollar Tree, that I covered with brown craft paper and then I stenciled it with the Mandela lace stencil and a variety of different blues. And I glued my legs, which these came from Target. Here's an idea while we're waiting for this to be glued down. These were ornaments. They were in the dollar spot at the front of Target. They had a little round um, cup hook on the underneath that I just twisted off. And they were probably either $1 for four or $3 for four. And I just glued those to the bottom. I didn't even do anything to my book. Uh, so I thought it turned out pretty cute. Okay, let's do another foot. When I am making a riser, I personally like to do the feet or legs out close to the corners, not inside the center, because it makes your riser less likely to tip over. Where if you put your feet in towards the center and not right out to the edges, it's a little bit easier for them to tip over and you don't want that to happen. I may also come back and put some little furniture, those felt pads, on the bottom of this. That would work too. Okay, this is the last leg.
We'll definitely come back and give these a second coat of paint, but it's gonna be so cute. Okay, and let's see. I decided this one was going to be the top book. Um, so, these books came from Dollar Tree. They're just hardcover books. Um, this one was called This Kind of Love. This Kind of Love. And this one was a clean protein book. Um, what was important about these books was that they were hardcover and they had a white covering. So really all I had to worry about was covering the markings of the book that were on the spine. And that was easy with two coats of paint. Okay, so close this up. And we're gonna stencil just the top book. And then I will come back and um, paint the legs a little more. And I'm just thinking, I kind of feel like I want some painter's tape on here so that I can not get a big puddle of the chalk paste right there. So let me just do a little painter's tape. don't have a second one of the stencils that came in the craft club, but I do have a bunch of other pattern stencils that would all work. So if you have any of these or any of the other beautiful pattern stencils from MagnoliaDIY.com, you could certainly use them. We're going to use this one. Um, yeah, so we're going to use this one. It's called... Moroccan pattern, I believe. This one is Victorian pattern, all over roses, uh, flower power, I think, Asian flower, butterflies, lemons, mushrooms. This one is called Abstract, and this one is called Philly Dooley. So you could use any all over pattern stencil that appeals to you. I'm going to use this one. And I am going to fuzz it just a little bit. And I need to figure out where do I want this to sit. this just a little bit. I think this is going to go nicely with the other design. They look like it looks like tiles. Okay, I'm going to have to play with this for a little bit to get it how I want it to be. Okay. okay, and I did nothing to prepare this book except 
paint it with two coats of uh, that ocean. So I just put some blobs on here. We'll pull them through the holes on the stencil. So if you were going to make a book riser using these same Dollar Tree ingredients, you would be spending $3.75 for the three hardcover books, which you could take this project apart in the future if you wanted and do something different, so you're not committed to it forever. Um, and then whatever the cost of the feet are. Uh, so it's a pretty affor affordable, oh my gosh. This is so cute. Look at that. Okay, let me throw this over here in my little tub. This helped for sure with a puddling when you have an uneven surface and you're trying to do a flat stencil on it. You can sometimes in the crevices get a puddle of chalk paste. Isn't that cute? And here is my book stack riser. And here is the other one. Let's see where I'm going to put it so that you can see. I'll get good pictures. Um, I think it turned out adorable. I don't have to use all three books. I could give this one more coat of paint and then do a stencil on top of that. Um, I could flip my books over and do, since I've painted the front and the back, do all of that. So let me show you now some projects and ideas that I have done. But first, let me get my chalk paste closed. Okay, so I have a pile of stuff, and I already showed you this, this little book riser. You can make a riser out of anything, seriously. These are some cute little cutting boards that my friend Susie sent me. I think these came from the Netherlands, I'm not sure. And they could be an adorable little riser. And I'll show you some feet options in just a minute. But any kind of a wood cutting board or wood surface can become a riser. This is a piece of wood that has that beveled edge on it. It's a rectangle. You can get these in ovals and circles. This one came from Dollar Tree, but I've seen all this same kind of stuff at um, Hobby Lobby. And you could use something like that and just, you know, use whatever feet you might want, which I have some out to show you in just a minute. This could be a cute little riser too. Um, it was $3 at Dollar Tree Plus. I would remove this string and that could be really cute as a little elevated riser. Oh, here's the ones, the other ones that I was telling you about. Here's a circle. This probably came from Hobby Lobby, and it was $2.99. I probably bought it when stuff was on sale. And this one came from Hobby Lobby also, and it was $3.99. These have been in my stash for a 
long time. I also pulled out some things that I picked up at Goodwill. This was a, I don't know, depending on your style, you either love this or hate it. I don't know if somebody hand painted that or if it came that way. I paid $209 for it at Goodwill. So I could paint that and just stencil the center, get some feet. That would make a great riser. And then here is a piece of wood that I picked up at Goodwill. Also, somebody had started a project with it and then they didn't finish. And this project's actually pretty cute. Um, but I probably would paint it and then do the whole thing and it could make a great little riser. So it's seriously any kind of wood that you can think of. And then as far as feet go, I have some ideas to share with you. Okay, these make great feet. This was a, um, a garland for a Christmas tree that I purchased after Christmas was over at Walmart. Let's see if I have some scissors. And um, probably for two or three dollars, it has all of these little wood pieces that make great feet or legs. You just have to get some pliers, catch an end of this uh, ribbon that's glued around its tummy, pull that off, paint them, stain them, whatever you want to do. So keep that in mind that it does not have to be actual feet um, to be turned into a riser. These are some from Hobby Lobby that you can use. This one was $4.99. These are like little candle holder things. The only thing I don't like about these pieces from Hobby Lobby, well, this one had 16 pieces when I purchased it. So it would be enough for four risers. But sometimes they give you a weird number. Like this one, for example. This is another wood shape that would make a great foot or leg. It's the same thing. It just depends on what you want to call it. And this one came with five pieces. I mean, really. <laughs> Why five? Because five doesn't work. This is another kind of a shape uh, that you can get from Hobby Lobby. Here's some, these are called ball knob and they have a flat surface here so that's where you would glue it to the underneath and then the round on the bottom. This one came with nine pieces so you could do two risers and have one left over. And then these are some of these little wagon wheel things. This one came with 19 pieces, go figure. I like to glue these um, together. Sometimes I'll add them to another piece of wood and then paint or stain the whole thing if I want something to be taller. So those are some options. These little blocks from Woodpile, these are kind of big, but this type of thing, these work as little feet or legs. Um, this, I was just digging through my stuff this morning. I guess I didn't find the other pieces. This was a little wood uh, set of three or four little, they look like little terracotta pots from Dollar Tree. And you would have to get four though because each set had three or four different sizes. But these make great feet or legs. So it would be 425 and you'd have enough to make four risers with each with four legs or feet. Um, these are some legs that I absolutely love. These came from Hobby Lobby. I did paint them and then I took that piece apart. So I hung on to my legs because these are about four dollars a piece. And you know what these actually are? They're finials for curtains but they're an adorable shape. Just a little pricey in my um, 
super frugal mind. These are actual legs. These came from either Lowe's or Home Depot. And the only thing with these is that you would have to drill a hole where you could screw this in. Uh, this was an ornament that I just took the little um, screwed in cup hook off. And they had also had ovals. So, those are the things I wanted to suggest. If you just keep your eyes open, what could I use as legs or feet to create an elevated riser? If it's small enough, you can use one of these little Dollar Tree candle holder things. Oh, look at this. Interesting. This one has a round top and bottom, and this one has a round top and a square bottom. I did not notice that. I think I'll definitely use the one that's slightly different when I uh, assemble this one. Anyways, lots, lots, lots to think about, and um, if you just start looking around, you will see things that can be turned into legs or feet that don't have to cost a fortune. Uh, look at some of your books, because this is going to be adorable, this stack. And you can put all kinds of things on it, like maybe a white bird. I could tie some ribbon around the tummy if I wanted. I could even glue these books together. Um, this is a book that is covered in paper, in brown craft paper that I stenciled. And these were ornaments from Target. So there's, there's tons of things that you can do if you just start looking around. If you would like my supply list, and I'll be sure to include the name of this color of paint, because I think this is an awesome color. I am loving this. I'm almost loving this as much as my favorite, which is the plaster color. But anyways, if you want my supply list, just let me know, and I'll also include a replay link to this video in case you missed part of it or you want to watch part of it over again and it will make it super easy for you all you have to do is touch it with your finger and it'll take you right back to the very beginning of this video um, I hope that I have inspired you uh, there's so much you can do to create a riser and I just use the adorable stencil that came in my craft club box this month for april april 2024 i know i will get a ton of use with that stencil besides doing the project so if you have never stenciled or you've just done it a little but you don't really have a lot of the supplies that's a great way to try it um, let me know if you would like a link to my craft club page so that you can just go check it out. It's $22.95 a month plus your sales tax and uh, flat fee shipping, which is generally around $5. And you get a whole project, the surface, the doodads, um, a new squeegee, the medium, and a stencil that's going to be reusable many, many, many times. So it's a really good deal. And it's a good way to learn how to use the stencils in a lot of different ways. All right. Well, you guys have a blessed and wonderful rest of your day. Do it this or a this if you feel like it. That's a heart. Sprinkle, sprinkle if you feel like it. Let me know if you have questions. Have a blessed afternoon, and I will see you guys.